Let's try to get a 128 by 64 OLED display working on ATtiny85 over I squared C, see how fast it uses up memory, and see what compromises we can make to make it all work. For an upcoming project, I'm going to want to read in multiple analog voltages, display the readout on an OLED, and since that's about all I need to do, I want to use as simple a chip and circuit as possible. So I thought ATtiny85 might be a good way to go. Right now, the only ATtiny85s I have are on Digispark boards, so I'm going to use one of those for my testing. This is the Digispark schematic, and the ATtiny85 will be powered by USB 5 volts because I'll have that plugged in. Then I can access the GPIO on the headers and also use this module to power the OLED display. With the onboard components also connected to certain GPIO, I'm still able to hook up the display and communicate over I squared C, and I'm going to use one analog input on the reset pin, which in my case, this ATtiny is configured so that this pin does act as a reset. So I can read the analog voltage here as I apply 0 to 5 volts with a potentiometer, but if I go too low, it will cause this chip to reset. Just looking at the overall specs of the Digispark board, the ATtiny85 has 8K of flash memory, but because it's on Digispark, with a bootloader, we have about 6K actually available flash memory. So we need a library to control I squared C, and we want to use up to four analog inputs. Looking at this pinout diagram, we have analog input 0, 1, 2, and 3 on these pins, and also we're using I squared C serial clock and data. So I can't really use this analog 1 input, and there's onboard circuitry for USB, so I'm going to use analog 0 with a potentiometer. And here's my exact schematic. I'm taking 5 volts and ground from Digispark onto the breadboard, using a potentiometer across power and ground to give an analog voltage in on A0. The OLED is getting powered by 5 volts. Serial clock and data are going to the serial clock and data pins on Digispark. And there's 10K pull-up resistors on the I squared C lines. This scrolling on the screen is only an artifact of the camera. It looks normal in person. So as I do sample code uploads, I'll just take still images to show what it really looks like. Basically, it doesn't have this band scrolling up. In the Arduino IDE, I set my board for Digispark default 16.5 MHz. Then in the examples, there's Digispark OLED. It's configured to display two different images that are stored in flash memory. And it also shows how to print out text in two different fonts. When I try to compile, it uses 108% of the available program space. So let's just comment out this Digistump logo. Who cares about that? Now it compiled, but it's still using 91% of the program space available. So let's upload. We have to unplug Digispark, then hit upload, and wait until it tells us plug it in, then it will detect and start programming with the bootloader. So there's two different sizes of text, and there's an image being displayed. But 91% of program space is still a lot. So I took that original Digispark OLED sketch and stripped it down into two different samples. One shows an image that I created, and the other one reads in analog inputs and prints out text. So that's using the Digispark OLED library to drive the OLED and the wire library. So then I compared that later against using another OLED driver with a different I squared C library. We'll look at that later. Over on GitHub, we can look at the original Digispark OLED library. We have some essential functions to be able to print text, change fonts, move the cursor around, and we can display a bitmap image from memory. They used a certain application that allows you to take an image and convert it into an Arduino-friendly program memory array representing all the pixels in the display. 
I located this website, Image2CPP, and with this, you can upload an image. So I uploaded the thumbnail I use as an avatar, and then I can rescale it. So there's the original image size. And depending on how much detail is in the image, and if I just want it to be more of an outline or not, I can change this threshold. So let's say we made it 50. Now it may be looking like it picks up more detail, but it also loses some boundary definition. So I want to change this to be 128 by 64 as my target display size. And I'm going to have to scale the original image. So now it reduced it to fit. We want Arduino code, and you can call it whatever you want, gadget logo, and then you can generate code. And there is something you can copy and paste directly into an Arduino sketch, and that's your image. There's a note here that if your image comes out messed up, it says to try the other mode. So horizontal versus vertical. I think mine was horizontal at first, and it did come out weird. So I changed it to vertical and regenerated the code, and then it showed normal. So working from this Digispark OLED scaled down copy I made just to show the image, now I include my gadget logo H file, which refers to this, so it can access it. And all I'm doing is initializing the OLED display, drawing the image called gadget logo, and that's all we do. Just doing this with that original Digispark OLED sketch and library takes up 83% of program space. There's the 83%, and I will upload this into Digispark, and there's the image. After seeing how easy it is to fill up the ATtiny85 with this Digispark OLED library, I went searching for something more efficient. So I found this one, SSD1306 Minimal. And when we look into this library, instead of using wire for I2C, it uses tiny wire. So we need to install that as well. So I just downloaded this as a zip file and then in the Arduino IDE, I went to the library manager and installed a zip library and so on. And looking at some of the features in this library, we can also move the cursor around, print text, and we can still draw an image, although it's a little bit different, but it's basically it'll take the same program memory array and display an image. And here's the TinyWire M library that we can use efficiently on AT Tiny devices. So I also downloaded this zip and installed this library. And here's a sample sketch to display the same logo image. So instead of including the Digispark OLED library, I'm using the minimal OLED library. And again, in the main loop, all I'm doing is drawing the image on the display and then just looping forever. But now, it's only using 42% instead of 83% of the program space. But it does the same thing. Let's upload this. And there's the same image, a lot more efficient. Now to look at the other thing I want to do, which is read in analog voltages and display text on the screen. I did the same comparison. So the original Digispark OLED library to read ADC inputs and this minimal OLED library. Using the Digispark library, I'm doing an analog reading and converting it to an actual voltage that I can display. And if I just used an integer, this would round off. So it would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as my voltage readings. So I'm using this floating math, which does take a lot of space, and just displaying two decimal places. So instead of three volts, I'll see something like 3.45, which is a lot more useful. But doing this, I can only read one analog input. I had to comment out the other three analog inputs because I'm at 99% program space. So let's put this sketch in. And there's my analog voltage zero reading. The potentiometer is all the way to five volts, so it's saying 5.00. And if I turn that toward ground, the voltage is decreasing. But I can't go too low because this pin is also acting as reset. But the analog reading is working with a couple of digits of decimal. So I moved over to this minimal library. I'm doing the same general thing. But now I'm reading in all four analog voltages. And I'm still doing floating math. 
this library wants to print out strings. I can't just print out numbers like I could on the other one. So I had to make this little routine and one by one I print out the labels and then I run the routine to print the analog reading on channel 0, 1, 2, or 3. And what that does, it takes the analog reading here, converts it to a voltage with floating math, and converts it into a string with a total of four final characters, which would be the main digit and a dot, and then two decimals of further data, like 4.25. And this is rounding it off to two decimals. And then I can print that string value that I just converted. So doing all of this still, using all four channels, I'm still only 88% full. So let's upload this. And here's the four voltages being printed out in the built-in font. So V0 is the potentiometer, so I can still control that and get two decimals. And all of these others are just reading whatever the voltage happens to be on those pins. So potentiometer is analog zero, and then one is the serial clock, and two and three are the USB pins. In the future, when I just have an AT1085 on its own, I'll be able to use three out of these, but I can't use the one with I squared C because I'm using it for the OLED. I put my versions of all of those sketches over on GitHub along with the schematic and a copy of the Gadget Reboot logo. There may be even more efficient code out there, but this is one way to figure out how to use some peripherals like this display on such a small chip. And when I get this chip on its own instead of with the DigiSpark bootloader, I'll even have about 2K more program space, so it'll be even better. Now I know I can get this voltage readout feature in one of my upcoming projects, so stay tuned and see how that works out. See you on the next video.